Hey guys, welcome to the video. And before we even get started, I know some of you are probably saying, wait, hold up, hold up. Didn't this video already get released previously, part 3B? It did, but uh, someone of you were brought to my attention, the same viewer I mentioned in that video, uh, brought to my attention that basically everything that I showed you in that video, although the information that I showed you how to get, like, you know, the names of the bios and maybe the MD5 checksums of the bios and stuff, all that information, how you got it was correct. There's actually a way that is 50 billion times easier. So I showed you the far more complicated way to do it. Um, and there's a much easier way where that information will just display here on your RetroArch screen. Uh, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Before we get started though, um, for those of you who might be kind of lost with you know what all this is, I'll put part one of this series down in the description. Part one, if you watch the first five or six minutes, including the intro, that kind of gives you an idea of what it is that we're doing. But basically, we're going to cover all kinds of things retro arch uh, on this channel. I'm going to make a, a big retro arch um, tutorial playlist uh, where you can come here and hopefully find all of your retro arch tutorial needs. But since I'm making this from beginners all the way to advanced users, not just of RetroArch, but beginner to advanced users of, you know, PCs and RetroPie, uh, Switch, wherever, um, you know, RetroArch can be played on, um, I have to explain these videos in, you know, a more detailed and noob-friendly way so everybody can follow along and understand them. So, yeah, watch part one so you know where we're going with this. In the last video, part 3A, we covered some stuff on the BIOS, and this is just a follow-up as to um, where else you can get the you know information of the BIOS, the name, and you know perhaps the MD5 checksums, just to make sure that you have the correct set of BIOS for that particular emulator. So let's get started. All right, so whenever you want to find out some information about the BIOS to a particular emulator a particular core, all you do is load up the core first. And I'm using RetroArch on my PC, but this is pretty much the same for any version of RetroArch on any platform that you're using, uh, even if it's RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to load core. I'm gonna use the Atari 7800 as an example uh, to start with right here, which is the Pro System emulator or Pro System core. So select it. And then once you've selected, it'll go back here, go into information and then go into core information. And then you have some information about that core here. You know, it's funny because I've used RetroArch for years and over the last few months, because I've been wanting to do this series and make these RetroArch tutorials, I've been focusing on like all the more complex stuff and the things people have issues with uh, the most or problems with the most. And simple stuff like this, I kind of just ignored or just went over my head. So I never really bothered looking here because I'm like, oh, I, I know the system information or whatever. Um, and I thought it just gave credits and whatnot. But no, I didn't realize there was a bunch of stuff here. Um, so anyway, if you scroll down, it tells you the name of the BIOS here. In this case, these happen to be optional. When it's required, it'll tell you it's required. Um, in this particular case, I usually, to play all my games for Atari 7800, I usually do need to have these BIOS there, so I do have them. This missing thing, I don't know why that shows up. It tends to show up even if you have the correct BIOS there and they're named correctly and everything works because everything works on my Atari 7800, but you know, it still shows as missing, I don't know. And then here's an MD5 checksum. However, not all the time will there be an MD5 checksum. Also, sometimes the name that it gives you is not exact. Uh, even though this is kind of the right name, there should be some spaces in here. If we look at this site here that I referred you guys to in the last video, we go here to the Atari uh, Pro System 7800 BIOS, you'll see that the file name here is the same, but there's spacing. So you got to make sure you add those spaces and it, you know, it doesn't show that um, on RetroArch here, yeah, which is kind of unfortunate. And don't put the stuff in parentheses as you can see here there are no parentheses except the U so yeah that might be a little bit confusing too let me go ahead and show you one more let's do the Genesis um, let's do the Genesis plus GX one here uh, 
there we go genesis plus gx okay so i selected that one let's go to information core information and because this emulates a lot of different systems it shows you here a lot of different bios most of them though say optional you see that and the required ones here are for those that want to play sega cd uh, backups of the sega cd roms and um, yeah you're gonna have to have these here and again it says missing although i do have those three there but notice there's no md5 checksum the only checksums that are here are for these two files that are something else so if you want to find out what these are it doesn't tell you here unfortunately you can come somewhere to like this page where we talked about in the last video go to the genesis plus gx bios information and then here are those three uh, bio cd files and there are the md5 sums for those three keep in mind too that you know not every time are you going to have to update these bios really bios only need to get updated when they're like for um, arcade rom sets so like fb alpha arcade rom sets the newer rom sets will get updated with either newer bios files or more bios same thing with the the main rom sets MAME 2003 for example might have um you know five bios in the rom set and then uh, which is the 0 0.78 rom set then MAME 2016 emulator which i think it's the 0 0.188 rom set something like that anyway that might have like 15 bios inside of that rom set maybe some of the older ones got updated or maybe the older ones remain there and they just added some other ones but really it's just the arcade ones that tend to get updated once you find bios for the older retro consoles and handhelds that work really those will work almost forever i've been using the same atari 7800 bios for years and years and years same thing with the um, sega cd although there's different versions of them out there they've pretty much been the same ones forever uh, if a newer version of an emulator or a new core comes out, then yeah, maybe. Like if there was a Genesis um, Plus GX2 that comes out, maybe it might require different BIOS. Um, or it might require the same and maybe additional <laughs> BIOS. Who knows? But as long as you're using that same core, um, then once you find BIOS that work, those BIOS will pretty much remain the same always. Um, they really won't change. The exception is, of course, the arcade ROM sets. Now, in the next video I will that I will be releasing, I will be covering an example of this because we're going to cover Neo Geo BIOS. I'm going to show you how to update them um, and how to do some cool stuff with them, like put multiple uni BIOS inside of the one BIOS file. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. We'll cover it in the video. That's about it, guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. I sincerely do. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. A lot of retro arch uh, stuff is coming uh, your way and, uh, you know, just other stuff in general that I'm working on that I'll be releasing here soon. So as always, guys, again, thank you and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.